Well, welcome back to our live coverage of the total solar eclipse here on April 8th, 2024 a date. We've been looking forward to for a long time. Mm. Tim Miller along with Kaylee Kirby. We are at the University of Toledo at Centennial Mall. We know right now that the Glass Bowl is a great place to go today, too. Of course, where the Rockets play, they're going to have a great place for people to come and watch the eclipse. They also have some of their uh, Department of Physics and Astronomy experts there to get some commentary. But Kaylee, the place to be right now is here yes. at Centennial Mall. Yeah, and you know, the good thing is if you want to just watch it, you can go over there. If you right. get hungry, you can pop right over to Centennial Mall. But this, as Tim mentioned, is the place to be. There's food trucks inflatables. We even saw a mechanical bowl yes. when we were walking up. <laughs> so there's really something for everyone. There's also just types of games and stuff like that for kids to be able to interact in. And it is starting to pick up a little bit. We are seeing right. a whole range of people. We have kids, parents, students, so really a variety of people, but definitely yeah. a lot of fun. And you got the music in the background too. Yeah, and they're, they have lots of glasses here. So come on out and enjoy it and get your uh, Eclipse glasses here to keep your eyes safe. We want to get to our meteorologist, Ryan Weekman. Of course, we love working with Ryan every morning. Ryan, you are in uh, a place you call home, Bowling Green. How are things looking there at Doit Perry Stadium? Well, it's hard to go from University of Toledo to Bowling Green without mentioning the long-standing Battle of I-75 rivalry. And guys, I got to say, I think Bowling Green has a leg up on UT today, even though sky conditions are fantastic right there where you are in the Centennial Mall. Bowling Green is going to have about an extra minute to minute and a half of totality, and I think that's driving the crowds up. Let me show you what's happening now with the amount of cars that are coming in. We're starting to hit some of the overflow parking about two hours ago is when we first arrived here, and there was already a pretty steady stream of cars showing up, but it's really begun to pick up, and I think over the next 90 minutes is where we're going to go from more of the uh, plan ahead, hardcore, we know we want to be here, chasers when it comes to seeing the total solar eclipse to the people who are saying, OK, I really need to be here today and we're going to see these numbers go up and up. I've been really impressed by it. The time to know here at BGSU where we're located 156 in the afternoon. That's when the partial eclipse will begin. It's going to be 311 in the afternoon for exactly three minutes where I'm standing right here at Doit Perry Stadium is how much time we're going to see for totality. And in that time, we're going to hear a lot of oohs and ahs, no doubt about it, because the number of people continue to increase. We've got a crowd coming up here. Let me show you what's happening here, because a lot of the parking began over here at the Stro this morning, and now we're starting to hit more of the overflow parking. We've got that high deck of cirrus clouds, so these are those ice crystals that are high up in the atmosphere. And I've had people coming by, and they're asking, they're saying, Hey, is that cloud cover going to completely impede our viewing of the total solar eclipse? And I say, uh-uh, it's not thick enough. And what we're seeing on satellite is very favorable. What we're looking at here weather-wise, especially in Bowling Green, is about the top one half percent of weather days when it comes to early April. We have really lucked out for the years, months, weeks we've spent planning for this looking about as good as it gets down here. I'm going to be live at BGSU at the Doit all afternoon long. You still got some time. Come on out, say hi. Uh, for now, we'll send it back to Jeff and Kaylee there. Uh, again, a big day all across Northwest Ohio. Absolutely, Ryan. Thank you so much. I think the UV index is actually improving. I know he was talking about that thin layer of cloud mm -hmm. cloud deck that we're seeing, but like he said, not going to be a problem as the day rolls out. Boy, I'll tell you what, we have been, Chris has been talking about it for weeks and weeks yep. and weeks, saying like, even though you are not in the path of totality, you will still see some Something. of this eclipse. We are just lucky enough to be within that band, but we wanted to show you another perspective. One of those areas where they thought they were going to be a can't miss because it's in the southern U.S. That is in Houston, Texas. Look at this perspective from Earth Cam. They are dealing with showers today here at the noon hour. Of course, a couple hours behind us. But man, oh man, we could not have lucked out any better. No, and like, like you said, they're not in the path of totality, but uh, San Antonio, Austin, and Waco are and Dallas are all those bigger cities in Texas that are going to be in that path. And that might be hindered 
hindered a little bit by those storms going on down there. So I, really some bad luck. I bet you there are a lot of people who jumped on the expressways and headed this way if this was important to them yes. today. Of course, as we've said, it is for a lot of folks. Uh, our team of meteorologists spread out all over town, and we want to check in with Matt Willoughby. Springfield Township was one of those communities that jumped on the bandwagon yep. real early to get their planning, what they were going to be doing at Homecoming Park. Let's check in with another member of our team, meteorologist Matt Willoughby. Matt? Yeah, Jeff and Kelly, Total Eclipse of the Heart has been playing in my head the whole entire day, and we're just soaking up the sun here in Springfield Township, so the excitement is absolutely building, and you definitely tell that sun is out and it's glistening off of my shiny bald head for right now. So, yeah, we already got people out here, you know, just kind of relaxing, sitting out on the line. You can smell a nice, fresh cut grass, and of course, in the distance, you do see those wispy clouds, but just as Ryan said, not going to impact that solar eclipse. Still going to see a nice view of that solar eclipse so we do have a good amount of people out here so far but we are just building up the anticipation for today another thing that we do also have out here we have a glass making so you can make some glass at some extremely high temperatures uh, out here in Springfield Township and it's just going to be one of those uh, great days and as you look around me we have just an open field. So come on out here, enjoy it, lay on the grass, and just enjoy this spectacular once in a lifetime site. Now, of course, I do love some food. So we do also have some food. We got Mike's Pizza coming out and it's just uh, enjoying some food and some fun. And of course, that total solar eclipse. So it is just going to be a spectacular moment. And if you're around Springfield Township or you want to come down to Springfield Township, I'd highly advise you getting out here and just enjoying this solar eclipse. It is going to be an amazing time and I hope you do enjoy. We'll send it back to you, Jeff and Kaylee. I tell you what, I keep getting the short straw every time we do one of these remotes because <laughs> Matt Willoughby it's always finds so the fun. food. But he always <laughs> yeah. says he finds the food. We were at Fifth Third Park for opening day just a week ago, and he and Chase Bachman, they were enjoying all the new stuff that they have to share at the Fifth Third. Philly hot dogs or whatever. Right. I could see that. I'm like, why do we need to talk to our managers? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Uh, but we do want to check in with another one of our meteorologists. Kaylee Bowers is in the studio talking about how long we should actually expect to see the eclipse. Kaylee? Yeah, Kaylee, Jeff. In fact, we've had a couple questions on social media, so a few things to answer. How long will my city see the eclipse? Of course, it certainly depends on where you are, but as far as timing and placement all across the area, this is what we're talking about as far as we can advance our graphic for today. This is what we'll be seeing. As long as our city will be seeing, if we can go ahead and advance our graphic on Max 1, please, we're going to be seeing in Toledo about one minute and 51 seconds possible. Rossford, just a little over two minutes. If you're over towards Oregon, how about two minutes and five seconds over towards bomb me two minutes and six seconds. So a lot of places will be seeing around two minutes of totality just on this graphic alone. Perrysburg two minutes and 13 seconds Bowling Green where Ryan Weekman is almost three minutes of totality. As far as other places go, that's what we're seeing. Forest, Ohio is one of the places to be almost four minutes of totality. If you're over towards Finley and Hancock County, three minutes and 44 seconds. Ottawa, three minutes and 27 seconds near White House, just shy of two minutes. Napoleon at one minute and 42 seconds. And if you're over towards Defiance, one minute and 40 seconds. So a lot of places seeing around one to four minutes of totality. Those folks in Upper Sandusky also around four minutes. Same thing in Norwalk, same thing in Tiffin, Upper, or I should say Sandusky around three minutes and 45 seconds, 338 in Fremont, Port Clinton around three, th three minutes and 30 seconds. And we have more social media questions coming up but right now let's check back in with Jeff and Kaylee sounds like they're having a lot of fun downtown guys yeah, I'll tell you what, we have uh, just been kind of inundated with activity down here. Once again, if you're just joining us, a very special edition of WTOL 11 News at Noon, which is actually going to be an extended edition, which is going to go all the way until 630 tonight. <laughs> very, very extended. <laughs> but we want to be here kind of be walking you through what you should expect. Also, what's going on throughout our region. We're at the Imagination Station again. Lots of stuff going on here. There's viewing parties all throughout Northwest Ohio that we are checking into. We want to check in with Michael Sandlin, who's in Kenton. You're a few hours away, but you're going to see quite the time limit of totality there. Michael, how's it going? 
Yeah, absolutely, Kaylee. I know Tim at the beginning of the block said that they really were in a super special spot, but I feel like I really couldn't get luckier. I'm here at the Hardin County Fairgrounds, and we're starting to see more and more people come to this little city of 8,000 because we have one of the best seats in the entire country. We're going to get three minutes and 55 seconds of so totality. That's almost unprecedented in the rest of the state, and that's bringing in all kinds of people. I've talked to couples from Florida, people from Pennsylvania, but perhaps my favorite group I've talked to so far has to be this class of young astronomers from Virginia. Now, I have with me Ashley Sexton. She is their teacher. You guys come from Virginia. Where are you from? And tell me about your, your journey here so far. We're from Bland County, Virginia. These are students that uh, attend in Bland County High School in Rocky Gap, Virginia. We came in yesterday, took us about five and a half hours, and we stayed overnight. We've been out here at the fairgrounds since about 10 this morning, uh, just patiently waiting for totality to happen. Uh, we're going to stay overnight again tonight and then leave tomorrow. So, I mean, this is quite the journey to, to bring out all these high school kids here. Talk to me a little bit about why you felt it was so important for them to catch this. Many of the kids saw it in 2017 and uh, with the partial eclipse and really enjoyed it. I have not seen a total eclipse and I was determined to come. We have an organization called the With Bland Foundation. Hey, go ahead and turn uh, the shirt there real yeah, quick. Turn the shirt around. Uh, called the With Bland uh, Foundation, and they provide grants for uh, our school that we apply for, and they funded everything, the lodging, the food, the transportation, so these kids could come out here without having to pay a dime. Oh, that's awesome. So this is a free trip for you guys. I mean, talk to me about your excitement level right now. You've never seen anything like this before. I'm really excited to hang out with my friends and just experience new things. New things, absolutely. This yeah. is definitely a new thing for all of us. Hasn't been seen since the 1800s, and we won't see it again until 2099. So any final thoughts you think these kids should walk away with and our people at home should, should consider just being a teacher yourself and understanding what we can look forward to? This is just such an amazing opportunity. Uh, getting to see a total solar eclipse is something that is extremely rare. It's not something that happens all the time. Not many people get to even travel to go see it. So I am just so pleased I'm able to bring a couple of the students from our county. They don't really get out a whole lot and this is a this is an awesome opportunity for them. Absolutely. A rare opportunity indeed and one that you can still take advantage of. There are parks all around Hardin County. They're beginning to close because they're at full occupancy, but right now the Hardin County Fairgrounds are still open for more people to arrive. So if you want to catch it, come over here and join me. I'd love to see you, but I'm going to throw it back to you guys over the Imagination Station. I was just checking out our map once again, just showing yep. that path of totality. And as you were pointing out, he is in the dead the center. center right down there, right? Yeah, yeah, Ken, just as far uh, as the state is concerned. Oh, yeah, Ken, just a little bit south of Finley. So they really are in that middle ground, seeing almost four minutes of totality, which is that's a lot. Absolutely. And this is obviously down here along the uh, banks of the Maumee River. We have got a couple of different locations where people are setting up. Not only here at Imagination Station, Promenade Park is going to be another location where today they are having a party get underway there as well. Oh, yeah. Lots of action going on downtown Toledo. But again, there's places all across Northwest Ohio. These little cities, too, that are getting this influx of thousands of thousands of people today. Once in a lifetime event. We'll have more after the break.